this archipelago belongs to the Republic of Venezuela, which is located approximately uh, 160 kilometers from the northern central coast. It was declared a national park in 1972 by the Venezuelan government and is the oldest national marine park in the Caribbean. It has a, an approximate area of 40.61 kilometers, square kilometers. It has approximately around 42 keys of coral origin, two great big uh, reef barriers, one in the east and one in the south, and it has over 300 shoals. Los Roques is primarily composed of coral reefs and its geographical location makes it a special place for that perfect development due to a few reasons. The physical location of the atoll gives it a high stability due to the fact that it's not located in the hurricane high highway path. Its average rainfall is 256 uh, millimeters per year. The average temperature here in the, arch in the archipelago varies from 27 to 34 degrees and the water temperature is between 25 and 29 compared to Tasmania that in winter goes from 4 degrees to 19 degrees. It has many natural values and between some of them are the mangroves. These are salt tolerant trees or shrubs that grow in coastal saline waters. They are also called allophytes and are very well adapted to this type of environment. They contain a complex salt filtration system and a complex root system to cope with the high salinity levels, water immersion, wave action and low anoxic, which is low oxygen, conditions of the substrate, which is generally mud. There are three species of mangroves in the national park, which are the black mangrove, the white mangrove and the red mangrove. They have an ecological significance because they function as a nesting and feeding area for hundreds of species of local birds. Like for example, the great blue heron, Ardea erodias, the brown pelican, Pelicanus occidentalis, between some, and even two migrating birds that stop in this remote area to rest before continuing the journey to the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere. On another hand, the roots of the red mangrove, which its scientific name is Rhizophora mangle, which are mostly submerged in the water. By the way, this is the only species that has this characteristic out of the other two. These submerged roots function as natural nurseries for hundreds of species of fish, young fish, alevines called, like for example, the common snook, Centropomus undecimalis, like the white grunt or common grunt, Imolong plumeri, the blue crab, Calinectes sapidus, spiny lobster, Panulivus argus, and even it serves as homes for young predators such as barracuda. The other natural value here in the archipelago are coral reefs, which are calcium carbonate structures built by colonies, hundreds of polyps from the taxonomic film Nidaria. By the way, jellyfish also form part of this taxonomic film. Well, we all have seen coral reef ecosystems, but what makes it so special is that the low anthropogenic disturbances that the archipelago has makes it the perfect formula for having one of the most pristine and beautiful reef systems in the Caribbean. Species like elkhorn coral Acropora palmata can grow up, can grow surprisingly big and opened out, very healthy and hypnotizing to sight, reaching a couple of meters wide. Not only this colony grows splendidly, but different types of brain coral from the genus Diplodia are also present all over the archipelago, and corals from the genera Milepora, which are fire corals, making it the perfect habitat for hundreds of species, species of fishes, crustacean, invertebrate. Sea turtles can be seen all around the archipelago, feeding and nesting during some certain times a year. Schools of tarpons, which are very famous in sport fishing, can grow, can grow to enormous sizes. Parrot fishes also, from small Parrot fishes that can fit to your hand to huge sizes, a couple of kilos. This archipelago holds one of the most richest biodiversity ecosystems in the Caribbean. And believe it or not, another natural value that at one point was a human disturbance 
are shipwrecks. Some of these shipwrecks are quite recent in time and are located all over the archipelago, but others even date from 1873, like the shipwrecks of the English Brigantine and Thora Steam. Both of these vessels at that time were carrying a very important cargo, and it was the statue of Simon Bolivar, the great liberator of South America, which sank during its journey from Europe to mainland Venezuela. The natural disturbances in the archipelago are Caribbean hurricanes. The season starts in June and goes to end of November, and the peaks happen in August, September, and October. The fact that hurricanes pass through or go near the archipelago makes it vulnerable for changes such as current, temperature, and geomorphology. But the probabilities are, are quite low, and in general, Venezuela as well as Colombia are shielded because the hurricane corridor is far north. Besides hurricanes, there is another natural phenomenon that has affected the Venezuelan coast and even sunken small towns in the past, and that's tsunamis. On December 25th, 1541, a tsunami sunk Nueva Cadiz town, the first town of Venezuela at that time, and Archipelago Los Roques is located in the south central region of the Caribbean tectonic plate and it's vulnerable from tsunamis formed by any of their movements but this phenomenon doesn't often happen the other disturbances are caused by humans and I'll separate them in two land and water disturbances inland the archipelago holds a community of mostly local fishermen touristic operators and a few foreigners a few foreign residents that that have actually invested in the archipelago, therefore stimulating the growth of the main town from maybe a couple of hundred, 50 years ago, to 1200, 1500 in 2012. They cut down mangroves for the construction purposes and do refilling in land, affecting the ecosystem around them. Also due to the fact that it, it's a fishing and touristic community, the main form of transport are boats and the boat engine oil discharge, the repairs, the machinery maintenance affects the soils. This goes all along the main town in the archipelago. The fact that the urban area isn't well planned, talking from the civil engineering point of view, when it rains a lot, storming the Caribbean, hurricane, the water sewage floods big part of the town having negative public health issues. Water disturbances. The treated water from the main town is also expelled into the ocean through a 200 meter pipe, favoring the eutrophication of the water, which is a disproportional a disproportion of the natural levels of nutrients in the marine water, stimulating the bloom of certain species of algae that we call bioindicators. In the Gran Roque, the sea lettuce algae, a scientific name Ulva, is present all over or all around the southern part of the main island and not only here but in other keys as well. Also, besides the present eutrophication, here you can see the construction project of extending the runway into the water, destroying the coral reef. These disturbances, where you interfere with the natural flow of currents, sediments, have a catastrophic effect. The beach sedimentation in some areas of the island will change, affecting negatively species and the coral reef ecosystem in general. Another disturbance is the tourism activity. Most of the boats that travel through the archipelago are touristic boats, small dinghies up to huge yachts. The boat corridor sailing route along the archipelago has to be very well managed. It happens a lot that captains don't know the area, therefore sailing through shallow waters, hitting the coral reef with the propellers, affecting the habitat below. And this is a form of fragmentation. Besides this, some tourism operators don't follow the ecotourism pla management plans. They don't explain the ecology, importance of the area, and tourists just simply touch everything they see and take everything they want from the natural environment. Another very important disturbance is the invasive species topic. Here in the archipelago, the lionfish, Terois volitans, originally from the Indo-Pacific, has arrived and established itself. 
This marine invader is affecting species of ecological significance like parrotfish, species of economical significance like uh, groupers or grunts, and believe it or not, it's having negative public health effects because some tourists have been stung and it's very painful. I say it from a personal experience. Therefore, spreading the word that these beaches are not totally safe to swim in. Between 2013 and 2014, we gathered data from four different lionfish fishing competitions that the Venezuelan government promoted for a total amount of nearly 2,000 catches and found out that it has spread it nationwide and quite big specimens too. Archipelago Los Roques in this case because it's a national park and fishing is theoretically managed, therefore isn't allowed in all areas. The lionfish are bigger in the archipelago compared to the rest of Venezuelan coast and actually the biggest fish caught in our total amount for the four competitions had a weight of 1.5 kilos and was from Archipelago Los Roques. The stakeholders here are mainly tourists followed by local fishermen, local visitors which are just people from the main island of El Gran Roque that visit other keys, government officers which are right high rank military, scientists like historians, biologists, ornithologists between some. The maximum authority concerning the national park are the local state government, the Francisco of Miranda Island Territory, but due to the fact that it is a national park there is another ruling authority and that is the Ministry of Environment through the Department of National Park Service. In this picture there is a park ranger releasing small size lobsters caught by contraband earlier that day. Also the Ministry of Aquaculture and Fisheries which is in charge of all the fishing activities in the archipelago. Here there are, go there are government workers measuring lobsters during fishing uh, lobster season. The National Guard and the Navy doing border control and patrolling the country's marine territory. All of these authorities work together to maintain the order in the national park. But the problem comes when there is a fishing culture of specific species involved. For example, the fishery of the Caribbean lobster, Panulirus argus, that has been going on for decades due to the high demand and the smuggling to Bonaire, which in this case the profit in US dollars can be abysmal. Another species that falls into this loop of fishing culture is the queen conch, Lobatus gigas, which is an endangered species and this fishery is banned all year long in the country, adding the fact that the locals have been catching them also for centuries and the lack of well prepared professional park rangers and fishery rangers makes, makes the task even harder and illegal fishing goes on every day. Also, believe it or not, the Venezuelan economy influences this illegal fishing and is very hard to manage too. In Venezuela, the acquisition of another currency, US dollars, British pounds, yen, etc., has been banned since the year 2003 and this has led to a creation of a parallel black market from where you can find foreign currency at a very high prices. The fishermen who go out illegally invest for example $100 or less in, in or less in gear, bait, food, engine oil, petrol and by catching illegal queen conch and lobster which they sell, they can come home with over $3,000 after risking their lives for more or less two days and the profits are even higher if they sell the US dollars or the foreign currency in the black market. The sampling of coral reefs is done by different methods, like the belt transect, the toe diver between some. These methods were used in the archipelago to make a visual census of corals and also visually census the population of lionfish present. Both techniques are very similar, but the belt transect method is done when an area has to be specifically and carefully searched and catalogued by types of species. This method is described by placing a transect uh, measuring tape approximately 25 meters in length and the diver or divers will swim along the transect from one end to the other, recording the species of corals and lionfish 5 meters in either side of the transect, also depending on the visibility in the water. This transect is done at different depths 
and in all cases taking in consideration the safety of, of the divers or divers in the area. The tow diver technique is described by towing a diver through a 50 meter rope or cable at very low speed, one knot or less, and at a specific depth through an area. The diver will visually see and take note in a special board of the species of corals below him and quantities of lionfish seen. All of these techniques can be done simultaneously by using bathymetry or remote sensing on board the boat. Bathymetry is a method where an apparatus scans the floor, the ocean floor, recording depth and height of underwater sediment or structures along the area. Like showed in this case by the Australian government searching for the Malaysian flight MH370. The other method for quantifying not coral reefs but lionfish is actually by extracting them as shown here and taking all the data needed for future analysis. The specimens are measured in land using a ichthyometer, which is just in this case a rigid or a measuring tape and weighed using an electronic scale. All the data gathered in the field about lionfish is analyzed afterwards. The measurements generally taken from lionfish are standard length, the total length and the weight of the fish. All of these are put in a database and the final result will be valuable information like shown here. Quantities and for example numbers of specimens per area and this will be essential when elaborating in the management mitigation plan for this invasive species. Archipelago Los Roques is a pristine ecosystem and as commented before its geographical location favors the nourishment of life. But climate change as part of a worldwide disturbance is affecting the oceans. The sea temperature is rising affecting the coral reefs all over the globe. It's hardly surprising that over the last two decades the number of coral diseases like bleaching has grown exponentially and there are outbreaks in every tropical ocean. The bleaching is the rupture of the symbiosis between the polyp and the algae, resulting in loss of color and eventually the corals end up dying. These changes together with anthropogenic disturbances are effects that we have been seen happening here in the Venezuelan archipelago and worldwide also. Effects of these change in actions to our environment have to be studied and data from the field has to be taken and analyzed efficiently. Doing this will allow us to have better understanding of the intra and interspecific relationships between species, how they are behaving and adapting to these changes changes in their habitat and having a better understanding of the ecosystem together with its with its processes will grant us more knowledge for managing strategies and policies to be implemented for our future generations.